This is a Xenolink data view analysis for Andrew LeBlanc. This is for a uh, running, distance running evaluation. <clears throat> uh, first thing uh, to make note is that what we're, we're looking at is uh, running phases, is, is breaking uh, the, uh, the phases into uh, the pedal uh, uh, half, uh, that was with the foot in contact with the ground, and then the recovery or swing half. As far as the, the, the pedal side, um, we have our initial foot contact with the ground, uh, mid stance, and toe off with the ground as our primary uh, sort of event indicators. We have our initial absorption phase uh, between initial contact and mid stance, and then we have our propulsion phase um, from mid stance to toe off, and then we have our recovery on the swing through. So what we're looking at in every graph are those three events for, for twice for each side. So we have our right side, contact, mid stance, toe off, and then our left side, contact, mid stance, toe off, go back to the right, and then back to the left. So we've got two essentially gait cycles per side. The first thing that we like to look at is the uh, relationship between pelvic rotation, the pelvic girdle rotating about the spine relative to the upper thoracic or the upper torso rotating about the spine. It's that relationship um, that creates counter torque, uh, especially through the um, uh, lower abdominals or lower, lower torso inner and outer oblique um, that uh, facilitates uh, or initiates recovery phase and which and then a recovery phase of uh, initiating or, or driving uh, the propulsion aspect, both the absorption as well as propulsion part of the, the pedal or the foundation part. Um, so what we're looking for is upper thoracic and, up and, and um, pelvis to move essentially uh, symmetric of each other, essentially looking a lot like what we see here. We have the upper torso rotating in blue relative to the pelvis rotating opposite. So you have essentially equal and opposite movement. Typically in a uh, basic running uh, movement pattern, uh, distance type pattern, uh, again, depends on speeds a little bit, but we usually see pelvic rotation inside of 10 degrees. So it's usually about, averages out about 8 to 10 degrees, and our upper thoracic rotation typically in the area of um, 17 to 20, um, average probably about 18, 18 and a half um, uh, uh, degrees of rotation. So what we see here is, first of all, good symmetry, uh, which indicates good torso utilization. One of the most overlooked aspects of running is uh, the, the core dynamic, not just the core stability, but the core dynamic. And uh, what we see here is, is pretty effective overall core dynamic. Probably a little more, um, slightly more hip rotation or pelvic rotation than what we, what we would expect. Um, upper thoracic, maybe a little under rotated. But for the most part, uh, very symmetric, uh, very good-looking uh, dynamic, which would indicate good general facilitation of that recovery. And that recovery, uh, facilitation of recovery um, is important. We like to see the, the, the actual facilitation of the recovery occurring before the leg comes off the ground. And, and the key to that is good uh, pelvic to upper thoracic coordination. And in this case, we see pretty good overall pelvic to thoracic coordination. Maybe, again, a little bit more mobility at the pelvis than we would expect, a little less at the upper thoracic, but for the most part, really effective. You also see, for the most part, really good symmetry between left and right side. Uh, upper thoracic at about 15 uh, to 17, so you're really only within a couple, literally a couple degrees. Uh, and pelvic rotation, again, 15 uh, to maybe 14, so really good symmetry left to right. So what we see here is really good core dynamic. Um, the next area that we would look at would be uh, the um, interaction of, of the knee and the hip extension speeds at uh, or during our propulsion phase. So what happens here is as the runner, let's look at the right side, passes through mid stance, there's going to be a rapid extension of the knee and the hip, uh, both to push down into the ground as well as horizontal. Uh, it's that horizontal vertical impulse relationship that creates an effective propulsion forward. What we like to see from the joints or from the body is a, um, a rapid uh, extension to peak extension speed occurring both at the hip and at the knee simultaneously that should occur about halfway between mid stance and toe off. And that's essentially where you're going to start to get that, that um, uh, primary propulsion from mid stance to about halfway through 
And then you're going to start to uh, move into recovery phase even before that foot comes off the ground. And that's important uh, to running efficiency as well as speed in terms of sprinting. So what we look at first side is the right side. We see a peak knee extension speed occurring maybe a little bit late, but in the, in the you know, normal range um, at frame 15. And then you see peak um, hip extension also occurring here at about frame 15. Um, peak uh, knee extension occurs at about 118 degrees per second. Um, hip extension about 215 degrees per second. Um, so the, the key is, first, most important part is the coordination of this applied effort. Secondly, the speed at which the joints are moving to create that propulsion. The, the faster they get to their peak and the, and the higher that peak, even at slower speeds, the more efficient the impulse, the more efficient the running dynamic. In this case, what we see is overall, if you look at every stride, you see very good symmetry of, of joint, very good speed output, um, both knee and hip uh, for each stride mechanism. So really good basic running mechanics in terms of the sort of the base driver foundational kind of biomechanics. Um, if you want to be picky, though, you'll see that uh, the, the rate of um, force development is a little slow in that you typically like to see this peak occurring almost perfectly between mid stance and toe off, and then you want to see a better initiation of flexion at the knee uh, early or, or, or uh, before that toe comes off the ground, and that's going to improve run, overall running efficiency. And I'll show you when we look at center of mass movement, even though we're on a treadmill, how that impacts uh, our movement. But basically, if you want to be picky, you'll see left to right, you have good timing relationship between the knee and the hip. Uh, and it, that occurs on every stride. So that's great. It occurs a little bit late, though. And, and the speeds are on the low side. So we're, we're even, now remember, we're not talking about sprinting, but still you want that force to be created um, rather quickly. So you want the from mid stance to halfway through to toe off, you want a quick extension speed development at both the hip and the knee, which creates a, uh, a, a more of an, uh, an impulse, a shorter time to peak force development, uh, and then immediately want to start to initiate the recovery phase. Even while the foot's still in contact with the ground, you're going to see the knee go into flexion or um, begin that flexion process followed by the hip. So, with respect to propulsion and extension, knee and hip work simultaneously. With respect to recovery initiation, you're going to see the knee precede the hip. Um, so what this is saying is that overall, these are, these are good mechanics, but we're slow to create speed, we're late to create speed in terms of that phase dynamic, and we're late to initiate recovery. And um, that's going to impact our running efficiency. So uh, what we want to do is we want to improve uh, the, the rate of force development, uh, and that will improve where in the running cycle our primary horizontal um, and vertical impulses are created. And secondly, um, because that rate of force development is improved, the timing is improved, it happens sooner in the propulsion phase, you're going to get a better initiation of swing through, which is also um, going to um, improve the forward running dynamic, uh, running efficiency as well as speed, both. Uh, so what you're going to basically do is so you get more bang for your buck, essentially. And so, and what you're going to see here, if you look at the speed of center of mass, now typically if you're, if you're on a treadmill, you're not going anywhere. But what you're going to see is a fairly dramatic deceleration of the center of mass. Um, and remember, this is in uh, meters per second. So you see you're basically standing still. But you see through mid-stance, there's a pretty dramatic deceleration and then the acceleration off of that deceleration from the push through. You don't want to see this much deceleration relative to the push through. You're, you're, you're basically costing yourself um, propulsion. And that's because of the timing of our uh, propulsion forces and the, uh, also the timing of the initiation of recovery. This being too slow, there's going to be a drag. There's going to be a, a larger lull in the forward movement of the center of mass. Um, now, there's always going to be some lull through mid stance, but we don't want it to be so dramatic. And we'll take a quick look at our range of motion at the knee. Uh, you'll see what we're really looking for here is, you know, specific pattern, uh, but we're also looking for uh, symmetry. And you get, for the most part, pretty good symmetry, a little bit more left side knee uh, flexion uh, swing through than we have on the right side by a few degrees, probably about uh, you know, nine degrees or so. 
of difference there. Not overly significant, but certainly indicates some asymmetries in terms of uh, swing through knee flexion. I think more importantly, though, what you're going to see here is that um, your, your maximum knee extension occurs well after toe off. And that is something that we typically you know, want to change. We want to see our, our maximum knee extension occurring closer to toe off and then immediately going into our flexion um, as we come off the ground. This added um, extension in the air, open chain, is contributing to uh, a greater deceleration of the center of mass or sort of low in that movement of the center of mass. Uh, which means then you have to then make up for that. So your running economy and overall efficiency is going to uh, be sacrificed. When we look at our hip flexion extension, um, again, pretty good symmetry, but again, you'll see that the hip goes through uh, slightly more flexion on the swing through here, uh, about, about five degrees. Um, you'll see uh, in terms of extension, um, a little bit, of, you know, about, about equal symmetry there, a little bit of extension past. Um, toe off, but again, this occur. We like to see this occur a little bit closer to toe off, and not so far into. If you just got too much extension occurring, open chain after foot contact or after toe off, I should say. Um, and this is just this is number one. It's going to impact your running economy um, and and speed. But number two, it it also lends itself to uh, potentially um, higher mechanical risk of of injury, especially low back hamstring, um, ankles, because what you're basically asking is a lot of deceleration to occur uh, open chain, where a lot of this, uh, not all of it, not to the end point, but a lot of the primary deceleration off of extension should be occurring closed chain with the foot still in contact with the ground. So not only is it more efficient in terms of propulsion and keeping the body in the center of mass moving forward, um, but it, it is also more efficient change direction from extension to flexion, uh, do that primary uh, initiation while the foot is still closed chain in contact with the ground. Um, open chain, you're going to lend yourself, it's, it's harder to decelerate, change direction from extension to flexion, and you're uh, lending yourself to, um, uh, to potential mechanical injury. Um, the, uh, uh, what we would want to do here is, you know, we have really good basic running mechanics, but we can improve. So what, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve the rate of force development on extension, and that's going to improve the timing of force development or the timing of extension speeds during propulsion, which uh, sort of almost automatically in turn facilitate a better initiation of flexion or recovery phase. Um, to do this, though, the first thing we would want to do would be to make sure that we um, are extending and driving um, the uh, the knee and the hip off of a solid core, good foundational uh, pelvic stability, uh, hip control, hip hip stability, and so we want to very, start very uh, uh, slowly with developing um, this rate of force development by first developing a good platform for movement before we worry about actually creating power uh, or the, um, the sort of the rate of our, our extension or force development. So we'll start very simply with some basic exercises that emphasize um, symmetry, um, stability, and uh, proper joint mechanics for extension followed by flexion um, before we then go ahead and start to try to develop a better force output and better rate of force development.